Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Resident Evil Retribution Movie Thoughts So, to start with... Let's start at the beginning, that's always good. And I mean the... the and when I say beginning, I do mean the actual action scene, not the rewind of the action scene or the overlong exposition dump that, you know, fills people in from what happened in the other movies. The, the follow-up to the attack on Arcadia. Let's just start with why are Umbrella killing these people exactly? Like, it makes sense to try to kill Alice, but they're going in guns blazing instead of just trying to... You actually do see them throw at least one net, but you're also, you also see some of the troops just gunning down these, you know, white-clad... I get that they're, like, evil, but they were trying to experiment on these people or something in, you know, that's, that's why they were there. That's why they were at Arcadia, which is an umbrella facility. Why are they blowing up their own stuff, if they own the boat, even if Alice has just, you know, basically taken it over, can't they, like, shut it down, make it, you know, remain where it is in the water? Don't they have some kind of security feature to, to deal with this sort of situation? I mean, they evidently have all money to just toss away. So yeah, the the whole action scene, I mean, at the end of the fourth one, you literally see just... Don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to spoil any of the other ones, but yeah, the end of the fourth one leads directly into the first scene of this one, so it's not really spoiling anything from that movie, that the movie, that this movie doesn't already spoil. Literally, we just have all of these attack helicopters or planes, whatever, attacking the Arcadia. And then in this movie, basically, you know, Mila shoot. you know, she empties her two handguns, then she grabs the shotgun. Yeah, she, I guess she empties the handguns at Jill, who is, you know, currently being controlled. And then she grabs the, you know, the dual shotguns, sawn-off shotguns, shoots at the one guy flying towards her, and then that guy crashes and she gets thrown into the water, and that's literally all we see. That is just completely... Look, if that was what you were going to do, then don't show this, you know, the sight of all of these different helicopters. As, you know, I mean, there's maybe a dozen helicopters approaching the Arcadia. It's... Better action directors could handle something like that. And if, if you can't handle a scene like that, then don't write that scene for yourself. You know, it's, it's really just... I mean, it, it was obvious when we saw that cliffhanger that of course they were going to, you know, win, that it, Mila couldn't fight all of those off, but you could have still done something more with it than just one of them gets downed and she shoots a little at, at Jill. Something I found in this movie a lot is that it's hard to tell why the people aren't hitting each other. Like, you want the the tension of, ooh, these people are almost hitting each other, and maybe sometimes someone gets grazed by a bullet or wounded. People do get wounded in this movie, but it seems to just happen when the script calls for it more than, than you know... There are plenty of action movies where people don't get hit, especially the good guys, the, the title character, you know, lead character immunity kind of thing, but 
they usually try to make it seem like they might get hit, and in this just, there are so many bullets fired in both directions, and almost no one ever hits, and it just really takes the power away from, you know, all the shooting, all these guns. It, I, I found that the, this movie actually did better when it had just, when, when, for example, it had just one character fighting off some zombies, and the zombies didn't fire back. Because then you just have this thing of, well, when, you know, for example, when Mila's got the, the chain running through the white holes, you know, she uses the chain and she uses the one handgun, and she, you know, she has to shoot a zombie in the head to keep him permanently down, and so we're literally trying to figure out, oh, how can she avoid being attacked by them, and, you know, she keeps knocking down, you know, grabbing, you know, breaking necks, so on and so forth, and, you know, she almost loses the clip at one point, that whole thing. That is one of the best action scenes in this, because there isn't really that whole thing of, you know, there's no point where a zombie almost attacks her and then doesn't for some reason. Any time a zombie almost attacks her, the reason it doesn't manage to is because she knocks it away. And, you know, does so in a way that always looks like it basically could have happened. The wire work in this one was not as obvious as in the fourth one. Now, the... Let me think, there was... I suppose that more or less covered... But, but yeah, I mean... Some of the worst action in this was really when the evil clones, which is just a wonderful phrase right there, attack the good guy, the, the video game good guys, you know, Barry and Leon, and I guess, I guess Alice is there at that point too, but I think Ada is captured by the evil clones, and they're just shooting back and forth at each other, and, you know, I think, like, both sides are basically, like, taking cover, but, yeah, there's no point where you have, like, a feeling of, okay, now it's really taking shape. Now, now we, you know, soon they will be able to take out the other one. They, you know, something that might have been interesting is if they shoot at something that then falls down in front of the other, so they get a little bit of time to run away, something like that. But instead, it is just one group of people shooting at another group of people, and basically, excuse me, pretty much no one is ever hit, you know. Now, and Barry's death was pretty ridiculous, you know, where he gets shot several times, and then he falls down, and then he gets up and shoots just the one guy, and then he gets killed again. It's, it's one of the, the Anderson moments, you know, where you think, ah, oh, now it's going to be totally awesome, like he's going to take out all of them, but no, he only takes out one of them, and that just, yeah. I don't even really know why, like, only one of each, you know, clone was sent out, or why so few... They, they could have cloned Jill, you know, she wasn't with, let me think... Yeah, she joined back up with, you know, never mind. Well, evil Alice clone. They have plenty of Alice clones, evidently, so they could have sent an evil Alice clone, have Alice fighting herself or something, you know. And uh, it was amusing to see Rodriguez both play the, you know, the, the badass, which I quite like to see. I, I enjoy her as the, as the sexy badass. Not quite as much as Mila, but still. And having to play this, you know, the 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 goody two shoes with the, you know, oh, I I voted on, I voted for gun control. No, no, you don't understand. I marched against the NRA, you know. And okay, look, this is how you shoot, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> it, yeah, that was that was fairly amusing. I, I do have to wonder if the if the other clone is also named Rain. I did like that was like the one line that was really good in this, or the one exchange, the the bit where Becky is talking to Good Girl Rain, and she says, "We met your sister." Oh, what? 
she's not very nice. <laughs> that was kind of funny. It's 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 the the understatement of it that that kind of yeah. I'd I'd say pretty much all the rest of the humor was trying too hard. Now. Or was just too often. I mean, when, when they said, you know, you're all going to die down here. I've heard that before. Yeah, so have we, Anderson. Please don't just, just leave that. It was awesome the first time we heard that. Now, it's just, yeah. And, and also the fact that the, the Red Queen talks way too much in this, and she repeats herself a lot. She doesn't say that much that's threatening or interesting. She just talks and she repeats, like I say in the review, you know, release biohazard and, you know, what's that other thing she kept saying? Attempt capture and if, or if unable to capture, terminate, something like that. Yeah, it's just not very interesting. And really, if the movie had, if the movie had not had the Red Queen, and literally it just was that all security was turned off in the facility, and the simulations were like turning on and off at random intervals, I think the movie would have made about the same amount of sense, and you at least wouldn't have had to, you know, you wouldn't have gotten the, this ruined image of this, you know, really memorable, creepy character. Now, the... I found it quite interesting that the virus that Evil Rain injects herself with makes her a better fighter. I, I get that the, the thing of, you know, she you know, swallows the bullets mask style and they just, they plop out of her fingers. I, I can't quite, I can't help but think that, you know, maybe if they just kept shooting, she would be standing there with the, the fingers, you know, just constantly dribbling out bullets. Yeah. Is that what they mean when they say sweating bullets? Now, the... I suppose that yes. So the 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 clones, of course, introduced or you know brought back. I suppose is the more appropriate term, so that the you know the simulations could be populated with all these yeah people who just go about their business over and over and the virus gets released and they, you know, yeah, they, they see what happens and they, you know, they work further from that at, you know, the Umbrella Corporation and, yeah, it just seems like you know, this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying, you know, they're like aperture science. That is just extremely wasteful. The, the thought of them just producing clone after clone and putting them in these different... Yeah, I, I don't quite know why they don't just, like... Why, why they keep doing it, at least. I, and especially when... You know, they're, you're told that they sold it to these different countries. It's not made clear if those countries actually used this ever, or if literally just, you know, once the virus got out, it just spread further and further. But, yeah, it just... It, again, I, I think it was meant to explain things, but really, the only reason it's there is that they had to explain how, you know, they had these different settings in the one movie, you know, New York, Tokyo, and Moscow. And that was basically the whole... And, yeah, it, it's very obviously written for that, for the sake of that, and... 
yeah, you just... And then you have the, the ridiculous Deus Ex Machina of, you know, once, yeah, you, you see it in the, in the, in, in this movie, in the, you know, in the opening where Alice, you know, states everything that's happened in the series so far, more or less. She, she tells us, you know, Wesker took his power, took her powers away. And then at the end of this movie, he gives them back to her because Wesker always keeps a Deus Ex Machina, it, you know, injector with him. So whenever, it's just, Paul, can I call you Paul? Please pick a direction for this series and stick with it because this is getting ridiculous. You keep changing your mind and literally some of these movies you can skip and you won't even be able to tell that you missed something that is not a good trait for a series that supposedly connects I mean other than Alice some of these movies don't connect to each other at all now and, and even with Alice it doesn't make that much sense they, they keep like capturing her and testing on her and keeping her alive and just Nothing really changes now, and and now in this one, of course, he went to the the ultimate, you know, writing himself into a corner. Which you might think that this means that like the next one might be the last one. Also, you know, the line of you know this will be the you know the ultimate battle or will begin or something like that. Humanity's last stand, I think, was the line. And, yeah, it's, um, I figure he's going to find some way to retcon it again. He's done this before in the series, said that, you know, this is it, and, uh, yeah, but apparently now all that's left of humanity is literally left in this, you know, one base. What exactly about the clones, though, if, I mean... If we're talking about like repopulation and, and having enough people to, you know, in, in this apparently Wesker left umbrella and I just wonder if, if you're the CEO, how do you quit and did he like, did he leave Red Queen in charge? Who? Activated Red Queen. Why is Red Queen trying to kill everyone? The last time she, you know, went homicidal. Yeah, that's yeah. I can. It's not spoiling because the movie itself says that in the in the opening when it retells events from earlier movies. Last time it Red Queen went homicidal. She killed the people in the hive because otherwise the they would contract the the T virus and leave the hive. So she killed them to keep them in the hive and it only went wrong because people went into the hive. In this one she's trying to kill everyone. So what exactly is the... Yeah, it just... It, it really doesn't make sense. There's, there's no... I, I don't know, is she going Skynet on us? If so, please tell us because that would actually... That could explain it, but there's no the, there's no mention of such a thing. But but yeah, so Wesker apparently left, and I I don't know quite why he couldn't like bring back some data on you know so somehow he could access it well enough to turn off the the security for like two minutes. He couldn't have grabbed some clones and brought back to to fight maybe or something. It's just. I just think it's a bad idea to, in the same movie, show these huge amounts of clones and say this is all that's left of humanity. I'm not necessarily saying that it's a good idea to bring in clones and have them fight and that that doesn't raise ethical issues, not that this movie is at all concerned with such. Yeah, it just... You know, one of the decently reasonably effective scenes in this film is actually 
when she wakes up for real, not the simulation one, and she's actually kind of she's actually being interrogated and they're they're basically like torturing her with with that sound. It's you know not all of us can can tolerate you know Justin Bieber, so it's oh, that that is a terribly data reference. One Direction, let's go with that. And yeah, it's actually the, the way it's cut and, and that whole thing is actually pretty decent. It's, it's an effective little scene. You, it, it conveys how much it, it hurts her. And then the movie keeps going from that and yeah. Now, the... We of course, with, with the clone thing, we of course also have the cloned daughter. I'm really not sure if literally Alice was supposed to have a daughter and they cloned her daughter just for that, or if it's that, you know, they brought in this little girl and, you know, she she might die sometimes in the simulation and this time she survived and so she and she looks at Alice and thinks, you know, that's her mother because, you know, they also have clones of, of Carlos and, yeah, and, and Rain, so, yeah, I, I don't, again, this is the kind of thing that the movie really should explain. I do think that it, it does kind of point to that Mila Jovovich has an interest in doing these movies where she kind of, she goes in and there's, there's kind of a, a clone and she says just because they're a clone doesn't mean that they're worthless or less human. And I don't know if exactly if that is like her writing that or her like nudging the writer and, and such. Let's be honest, if, if, she, if she tries to talk a guy into something, he, she probably doesn't have a hard time doing, you know, accomplishing that. But I do think that it is a very positive trait, and that, that is, yeah, it's, it's quite nice. Even if the, the movie surrounding that concept is, is as dumb as this, it, that is at least a, a nice, you know, thing and, and you know certainly obviously if the you know whether this little girl is a clone or not it's you know she's she's a cognizant being she's yeah there's you know obviously you know take care of her now that does of course bring us to the aliens ripoff with the whole surrogate mother daughter thing and yeah surrogate mother surrogate dad, daughter and the the rescue with you know I mean she practically says get away from her you which I don't know I guess the the liquor is actually male or it's it's not entirely clear they keep that is the same liquor isn't it I'm calling a liquor I'm, I don't remember if it's actually supposed to be called a a liquor just go with me on the, the big brain thing, the huge thing that, that captures the girl, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, they keep seeming to, you know, take it out. They, they, you know, smack into it with a car, it goes through a huge window. They, they bury it underground, and then we do see, you know, it, it still, like, gets back out or something. And then... She shoots it in the brain several times, but then it still comes back, if I recall. And I think that was the last we saw of it? I don't recall. I, I thought that it was under the ice when, when they shoot under rain to make her fall down. It was also ridiculous. Didn't she, like... Yeah, afterwards, you know, she was, like, fighting in the water, and then she got up, and then she's like, hanging on to the eyes, I'm gonna get you, and then she gets pulled out. Did she come back up once more? Something. It was just ridiculous. It, again, this is the kind of thing where if, like, if they had just shot, and she had been, like, shocked, and then she disappeared down, you know, the zombies pulling her down, that would be so much more effective. When she claws her way back up, it's like, what the, 
How could she? You can't punch underwater. You you realize that, right? It's it's. I mean, it would make sense for the zombies to be able to pull her down or to like bite her, because that's not you know punching is is this long. If if you don't have a lot of room to punch, you're not going to be able to punch very hard. But pulling someone or biting someone doesn't take that kind of you know. Yeah, that was that was. So back to, to the aliens ripoff. There was no indication that the liquor kept people alive. It's it's literally just completely transparently that we gotta have this big, you know scene with her going for the surrogate daughter. And it's just I mean, even the the egg part, it extremely obviously ripped off and yeah it has no effect because we had no idea that there was that possibility it's in aliens it built up we we realize that there is this i really don't want to spoil aliens if you have not seen it watch aliens i it you will not regret it it's a great action horror flick Anyway, yeah, it's just, here, there's there's no real build-up to it, and the the whole thing with, you know, Alice and, and Becky isn't that compelling. It's, again, the, the only thing about it that really works is that, you know, Alice takes the stand and says, no, she, you know, she might be a clone or something, but, you know, I'm going to take care of her. And, you know, and I'm not necessarily calling, you know, saying that Alice wouldn't go after Becky, but it is just really obviously written because, you know, Anderson remembered that that happened in Aliens. And, no me wrong, I know that he loves Aliens, you know, it's, you know, he's a huge fan of the original Aliens and Predator movies. Which makes the the treatment of of both creatures in in his versus movie a a true mystery, other than of course his lack of of talent for that kind of thing. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.